This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, but it's not broken in the way you're thinking. It's physically, I mean like structurally, a bit broken. Uh, it's missing PCI slot covers, it's missing thumb screws, all four of them to secure the left and right side panels. Uh, the case is rather dirty, I don't think it qualifies for a PCDC video, but it is a bit dirty. Um, he has been experiencing some random frame time spikes, which are never good. That means that your game doesn't play uh, smoothly, it can affect your competitiveness online. Uh, so we're gonna, I don't wanna dive too deep into it, but what a lot of times happens with these kinds of investigations uh, related to software is that you just find yourself spending way more time than you need to, uh, to to properly fix whatever is wrong. Look, it could be a driver issue. It could be some program that he downloaded years ago that's affecting performance. It could just be Windows 10, who knows? But what I told him to do, just in case, and I have a good feeling we're gonna end up doing this in this video, uh, I told him to back up his important files because I might just completely reinstall Windows and then give him the latest drivers for his graphics card, chipset drivers, etc., cetera, and uh, see if that fixes uh, those random frame time spikes he was uh, mentioning. I'm gonna see if we can replicate the issues he was describing uh, before we start fixing everything, uh, but I, no guarantees there. I'm not sure if I can even get into his uh, in, into his build. I'm, I'm asking him right now for his uh, password in case he has one. He might not have a password, but we'll see. Uh, and then we have uh, eight gigs of RAM in here, which I think is another culprit. So 16 gigs is what I would say the bare minimum should be in 2021, even for the, the hardware combination he's got in here, which is a Ryzen 5 1400 and a GTX either 1050 or 1050 Ti. So, you know, a decent entry level ish gaming PC. So, we've got quite a bit to address in this video. This is kind of just, um, no offense to the owner, just a basket case. Just many, many small problems with this build. And uh, rather than just completely give them a new build, which would be easy, but that's not really the point of the series, we're going to try to fix the individual issues associated with uh, this dysfunctionality. Is that a word? Probably not but uh, we're gonna roll with it. Okay, stay with me. If you're looking for a two and a half inch storage drive, check out Team Group's T-Force Delta Max RGB SSDs. They come in 500 gig and one terabyte variants and feature addressable LEDs on an isolated layer that can be controlled by either three pin ARGB or USB 2.0 headers, both cables included. Enjoy read and write speeds of up to 560 gigabytes per second over the SATA interface and a super clean mirror-like aesthetic. Learn more by clicking the link below. All right, so one of the first things we need to do is power the system on and uh, I got word from the owner that there shouldn't be a password on there, so we'll see if we can load up a benchmark and we'll kind of set like a, uh, a, a, I don't know, a control uh, for how the system performs before we do anything to it. Uh, so it is actually already turned on back there. Power button, there it is, okay. And uh, yeah, according to the email, it should post. Uh, we shouldn't have a problem with that. Got my little mouse here. Why do I always do this in just this playlist? I'm always forgetting to connect these like super important cables. Oh, this makes me look like a chump. Okay, let's see. Sometimes when you don't have anything connected to the graphics card, it doesn't know uh, where to boot. And I think that's the case here. Yep, so we need to reset. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not it's not even connected. Wait, so he does have an SSD in here. It's this thing hanging here. Yeah, this is probably this looks like a Samsung, maybe a 500 gig 860 Evo or something like that. So it's a it's a SATA two and a half inch Samsung SSD. But uh, okay, we don't have the hard drive connected. Interesting. We can definitely fix that for him. Uh, but that does solve our problem about boot times and all that. Um, he, you know, he's got plenty of storage here for games and the like, uh, but his uh, boot image is on the SSD, which is good. We don't need to mess with that then. I uh, think it froze. Oh, the loading icon froze. That's weird. I didn't touch or do anything. So this problem is not going away. I've checked connections, tried rebooting several times, even clearing the CMOS, and we're still getting this, this weird freezing issue here on the loading screen uh, right after the post. And I asked the viewer if this was something he experienced. He said no. That's concerning to me because he assures me that this this problem was not happening like the day before, right before he gave me the system. I don't see how this just sitting in my car would result in that. So I, I was concerned and I expressed that to him. I said, something's not adding up and, and this is it's making me feel a bit uncomfortable. So that's fine. Uh, what we're gonna do anyway, I guess we're not gonna be able to check to see what the system is looking like now performance wise. We're just gonna try to get that uh, that SSD wiped and we're gonna reinstall Windows on it and then we'll work on the other 
physical issues with this build. So we can get into the BIOS no problem, and we can even see that the SSD is detected, SATA port one, Samsung 870 EVO, one terabyte. So this all checks out. I mean, the drive is being detected, and when it tries to, to load the boot partition, that's when it freezes. That's when you see the MSI logo and that little spinny wheel that gets stuck. Ah, uh, okay. Another problem. I can't even get the system to boot into the thumb drive with the uh, media creation tool on it. It, it. It's doing the same thing where it just freezes. I, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words here. Uh, we're going to reset the CMOS to see if that fixes it. Now I know you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing here. We've gotta manually jump these two pins Reset the CMOS. Okay, so we should be getting a post sometime soon. I, I, it was just kind of weird. I've disconnected all drives, including the SSD, which has the boot uh, volume on it, and it still freezes right after it posts when it tries to load anything. Um, so that's what led me to believe that it was a BIOS config issue. So we reset the CMOS just in case there was maybe like a memory conflict. That's, that's quite frequent actually with Zen uh, 1, with the original Zen CPUs. Um, we want to click F2 to continue. And let's see if we can get into the boot device now. And if we can get into the boot device, then it means we can probably get into the SSD as well. So we won't need to reinstall Windows right away. We can run our preliminary tests. But I'm, I'm not too confident at this point. I don't really know what else it could be. But this is, just, this is just really weird. Why does it always do that? It just freezes right there. What is going on? I really don't understand why it's happening to me and why it wouldn't be happening to him. I'm, using, I'm even using the exact same HDMI port he was using from his graphics card. I've only got a keyboard and mouse plugged in along with the bootable USB, and we're still getting the same freezing issue right after we reset the CMOS. This is gonna be one of those hardware swapping games, which I really didn't see coming. And just to make sure it wasn't going insane, I reconnected his SSD and we still get the same issue. It actually freezes in the exact same spot. And I also noticed that our peripheral LEDs turn off, the LEDs and the keyboard turn off. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on. I can't control all delete, reset, anything like that. I have to physically uh, power off the system uh, on the motherboard. So this is, um, this is really weird. We're gonna start taking away some non-essential items like the Wi-Fi card, uh, the extra stick of RAM, and just see how bare bones we can get to try to isolate this issue. So we're gonna remove this Wi-Fi card first. This just slides out. We could actually move this further down on his board as well. He has it in this higher PCI slot here and it's right underneath one of the fans uh, for this graphics card. So we'll move that down when we reinstall it. Next up, we wanna rule out a RAM issue. So we're gonna remove the second stick here in, uh, this would be slot B2, I believe. I'll pull that out. We'll just leave one stick in there and uh, we'll swap these sticks around too if we get the same issue, just to rule out a bad dim. Although I, I, I'm usually not seeing this kind of issue where it just freezes after attempting to post. Uh, with bad RAM. But nonetheless, we're gonna clear it up just so that we have, yeah, a clean slate. So it says, oh no, your memory changed, yada, yada, yada. We don't really care. We're gonna hit F2 just to load default values and continue. And we'll see if this, see, I, now I've had this come up. Now, if I try to enter recovery, see I'll hit F1, it'll just take me back to the blue screen, uh, the recovery window. So it, it doesn't actually give me a chance to even like reconcile whatever issues there might be associated with this drive. Uh, so that, that's what leads me to believe that this is not even a drive issue. I think his SSD is fine. This looks like either a motherboard issue or, I don't know, what else it could be? No way. <laughs> okay, we're on the desktop now. This works. Um, he doesn't have a password, so that's cool. We can download a quick benchmark and just uh, get uh, some preliminary numbers. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm more inclined to blame the Wi-Fi card than the stick of RAM. So what we're gonna do is retrace our steps one piece at a time. We're gonna reinstall the DDR4 and we're gonna try booting up and see if we can get to the desktop again. I imagine we will. And then we're gonna add the Wi-Fi card back in in the same PCI slot he had it at. It's weird to think that a Wi-Fi card could be the reason why your system doesn't boot into Windows. But uh, like I said before, I've seen weirder things. Whoa, 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 okay, I totally glossed over something. I wonder how many of you noticed the first time around. Memory size, 8192 megabytes, right? That's two four gig sticks of DDR4. We have the Crucial Ballistics memory, his original kit still in his system right now. But before, if you look at the earlier footage, you only saw half of this, so like four, what is that? What's half of 192? Uh, 4,096 megabytes. So only one four gig stick was being detected. That means one of the sticks was not properly installed. And I bet you money, that's why the system was not booting correctly. I think it was just, it was maybe half slotted in. I didn't notice that it was incorrectly slotted when I pulled the stick out, but whatever we just did, because I reinstalled it, yep, now we're reading 
all eight gigs and the system boots up just fine. Now I did relocate his Wi-Fi card. It was a slot higher, pressed right against that first graphics card fan. That's no good. Uh, so I moved it down one and uh, yeah, we've got functional Wi-Fi now. So all is well. And I don't see any of the red flags with regards to hardware setup. I mean, his case is yes, a bit dusty, but he has plenty of fans and there are no major flow paths that are being choked by build up, you know, built up dust in these dust filters. They actually look fairly clean. Uh, so the only issue, like I said, that I saw was that Wi-Fi card being positioned so close to one of those graphics card fans uh, that that could cause the card to run a bit hotter and the card will, as a result, throttle back frequency to compensate. Uh, that could result in some inconsistent frame time spikes, but nothing that I would deem severe. Uh, I think the other big issue we need to tackle is the eight gigs of RAM that he has in here. I think upgrading that to 16 will be nice. He's already got the SSD with the operating system on it. I don't really see a need personally to reinstall Windows at this point uh, because all of the hardware seems to check out and he's got the latest drivers. So I don't think this is a driver issue. Um, I think he's just being bottlenecked in games. I think the that system RAM is uh, a, a big issue that he's probably overlooking. So I'm gonna upgrade him with a 16 gig kit of T-Force Delta RGB modules. These are really great. I've actually used this exact kit in several builds. It is a tried and true kit. Looks really nice as well with the integrated RGB. This is a uh, 3600 megahertz kit, actually gonna be a bit faster than what his system will probably support, seeing as though it's got a Zen 1 chip in it and they're not very fond of XMP profiles and higher memory frequencies. Uh, cast latency 18, 22, 22 though. So timings are a bit looser there. We might be able to hit somewhere near 3000 megahertz. Not too sure, but I think it's definitely gonna be a step in the right direction. Seeing as though we've got literally double the system RAM available in this kit over that uh, Crucial Ballistics kit he already has. Ooh, I bet you I know why that module came out. This right here is his eight pin EPS. He's got it running across the top of the motherboard and it runs right over these slots, especially this, uh, this far right slot here. Uh, slot B2. So it's possible when I was bringing it home that it, the, you know the cable slightly pulled that dim out. All you need are just a few improperly contacted pins and you'll get what we saw symptom wise or maybe even worse, maybe you don't get a post at all. So uh, yeah, interesting. We'll make sure to avoid this issue when we install the new kit. I've already got one dim installed. We'll get the second one installed right now. Now I can more or less guarantee that if we click this button right here and enable an XMP profile, the system's just gonna boot loop. The original Ryzen CPUs are extremely stubborn when it comes to any higher frequency RAM kit, regardless of how loose the timings are. I will click it and enable it just to show you that that's what it will do. And if that happens to you and you're on, again, something like, like he is on a Ryzen 5 1400, um, th there's really no point enabling this unless your kit of RAM is, is already um, you know, extremely slow um, comparatively, 2400 megahertz like this here. Uh, so we might just need to manually set a frequency around. Usually it caps out about 2666 megahertz and keeps some tight timings. And uh, he'll still benefit obviously from the huge bump to 16 gigs of system RAM over eight or worst case, if he was running four, I mean, that's gonna be night and day. Yep, system just sh the bed. I'd, I'd act surprised, but I'm really not. So what I'm gonna do is just manually set frequency to 2666 megahertz. In my experience, that tends to be a safe uh, play for original Ryzen CPUs. I just don't have time to fiddle with it. I could spend hours trying to fine tune memory. I'm more worried about upgrading system RAM. I think that's gonna be a, a, have a bigger impact overall. And if the owner wants to tweak frequencies and latencies and all that stuff later on, timings and such, he can do that on his own time. Here we go and we'll reset. Right, so that checks out. Next thing we're gonna do is install his hard disk drive that was not even connected when we got the system and uh, we'll partition it correctly so that he can use it as something like a, a Steam library of sorts. So we moved on to day two and one thing I noticed right away, it's gonna be a problem. The SATA cable included with this power supply and there's only one of them first off and the connections are really spaced out. So we have to include our hard drive, right? We have to secure it into this tray at the bottom, which means we need this one for the hard disk drive. Uh, but the SSD, I wanted to put like maybe right here. Um, well, this cable can't reach that. And the reason why it's kind of running up this way is because we have to power the optical drive way up here as well. So I, I don't exactly know how, how we're gonna be able to get this done. I mean, the, the SSD is just gonna have to be, it's just gonna have to dangle here, which is a bit odd. That's just what we have to work with. There's no other choice. So we'll just install this hard disk drive here in the top slot. There we go. Another thing we do need to take care of right now is this power supply. We need to flip it around because I do plan to remove the remaining three feet at the base of this case that will flatten uh, the grill against whatever surface he lays his case on. Uh, so we wanna turn this power supply fan side up to uh, yeah, make sure that the power supply is getting proper airflow. Um, we've got to also worry about cable length. So I'm gonna be probably completely redoing cable management now that I've had a chance to look at it. 
Um, it's almost like <laughs> with this kind of case, I almost feel like just taking everything out completely and redoing it all from scratch because even adding one storage drive kind of throws everything off. Let's see if we can flip this around. I think, like I said, I think we're going to have to, yep, he's got everything tied down in there. So, okay. Back to the right side. You know, to be honest, I mean, whoever first assembled this, I'm not sure if it was this viewer or someone else, um, actually did an okay job, you know, <laughs> working with what limited cable management headroom they had. Um, okay, so everything's pretty loose now. That's really not, what is this? Oh, there's another one there. Okay, so yeah. Now we can flip the power supply around and then we'll try to fix this as best we can. Okay, and I just removed the remaining three feet as well. So at least, oh gosh, we still don't have much slack here. So at least the uh, case sits flat. So there's there's that, it's not gonna be rocking back and forth anymore. Oh, still barely any cable slack. What is going on? What is this? This is the eight pin EP. The eight pin is just being stretched out. Is there a cutout up here? Nope, oh my gosh. This case is a mega cluster. I can't even twist this power supply around or the eight pin EPS up top is stretched too far because it needs to wrap across the top of the motherboard. I know you can't see that on camera, but it, it's just, oh. So I had to remove one of the top fans to get to this eight pin EPS cable. Everything is actually quite dusty. This is, it's pretty gross. So what I've done because this case doesn't have a cutout up top for eight pin EPS to run it along the back side of the motherboard tray, uh, I've just routed it along the top of the board between the graphics card and the Wi-Fi card. There's a little cutout in each of those. Uh, just, just big enough to where you can fit an 8-pin EPS cable. So that's what I've done. I mean, it's not the cleanest, but at least we were able to flip our power supply around and kind of get around that uh, inconvenience with the lack of that cutout in the case. All right, so just doing a bit of cable management at this point. We'll try to find some PCI rear slot covers uh, to clean up the space back here, and then we'll secure his left and right panels with some new screws. I think the bulk of our extra cable lengths are just gonna have to go under a hard drive tray. I don't, I don't really see anywhere else in this tower that we can stow them. So uh, it's gonna be here. It's not gonna look super Super pretty, but uh, at this point we're just going for utility above anything else. So I have given this thing a bit of a scrub, but it is nowhere near totally clean. Definitely nothing like our PCDC playlist. I still got to take my electric duster and blow all the uh, all the flakes from these shop towels out of the build. But um, yeah, I mean you can see. I mean there's a lot of dust in here, and uh, I would advise that this viewer deep clean it or it as close to deep cleaning it as possible soon because if he doesn't then this will only get worse and the amount of dust in here uh, will eventually turn into a thick grime that you're not going to be able to get off with just a can of air. And time to whip out the electric duster. Here we go. There we go. It is not uh, deep cleaned again. That's not the point of this video, uh, but we did clean it up quite considerably from, from what it looked like when it came in here. And uh, we're gonna fix just a couple more things. We'll get this left panel secured with uh, some thumb screws. I do have extras. And then uh, yeah, we'll power it on again and make sure everything works for them. Now I do have some extra PCI slot covers uh, that are the same more or less. So it's not gonna look really weird and tacky having a bunch of different uh, covers here. We'll get these last few on here. It also looks like there was a cover here that blocked this opening uh, beside the rear uh, covers and it's gone, it's missing. I don't know what happened. I don't know what the history is of this PC, but it's, uh, it's kind of whack. And lastly, I've got a couple thumb screws here to secure the left side panel because these were missing. So we'll slide this on. There we go. And one thumb screw. And there we are. Now with the hard drive installed and connected, we can click on this icon right here, create and format hard disk partitions. We'll see if we can see that uh, one terabyte drive in here somewhere. Okay, looks like there's stuff on both of these drives already, which is interesting. So I will just leave it as is. I was wondering if I needed to create a partition uh, or create a new volume if this was all unallocated space, but it looks like it is already good to go. I'm not sure what files are on here. Uh, I wasn't informed that anything was on this hard drive, so I'm just not gonna touch it. Good thing is it is connected now so you can access these files whenever he wants. I think we've pretty much done as much as we can do with this build without outright replacing 
uh, pretty vital components. And look, I get this a lot. I want to take a minute to address this because this comes up quite a bit in the comments uh, in these videos in particular, the PCDC playlist, as well as the Fixer Flop playlist. I get comments like, why don't you just upgrade? Why don't you just give them a better graphics card? Why don't you just give them a better CPU, motherboard, RAM case? Why don't you just build them an entirely new PC? That is not the point here. Like, I, to be fair, I'm not a charity either, right? I can't just keep giving out free hardware at my own expense. I, it, it's, it's just not feasible. It's not possible. Um, we, we try to do giveaways. Uh, we've done many giveaways in the past. We've given away several graphics cards, several PC builds, outright full-on gaming PCs. Uh, but in, in these playlists here, the point is to try to, in this one in particular, fix what is wrong, right? Without having to completely rebuild the system. If that was my, you know, if that was my goal, I would just give everyone new PCs every time they send in a broken system. You don't learn anything from that. The point is to troubleshoot the hardware that you have at your disposal and try to make it work without needing to replace components. That is where the key is because then it means that if you try to replicate this, you probably won't need to spend more money either on new hardware. Maybe you can salvage what you already have in your current rig. That's the point. That's why Fixer Flop is what it is. And I'm gonna try to stay true to that in the future. So sure, I could have upgraded this case. I could have upgraded this power supply. Heck, I could have upgraded this graphics card, this motherboard, everything else in here, but that would defeat the purpose of the playlist. I'm trying to get what is already in here back to working order and improve what I can within reason uh, when it comes to performance, if he's complaining about stuttering issues, etc. That's why I gave him the 16 gig kit of RAM. I think that's gonna make a big difference in game. Uh, for whatever reason, we had that, that boot issue. We fixed that as well. We didn't have to spend any money to get this system working again. Uh, the upgrade was just kind of just me doing something for the guy. You know, it, it wasn't required. I never guaranteed that I'd be giving him anything and he knew that. Uh, so I'm glad we were able to get everything working, clean it up just a bit. Obviously, it still needs to be cleaned. There's still quite a bit, even on this right panel here, or the left side panel, there's uh, still a bit of dust. Um, you know, if I really wanted to take the time, I could deep clean it, but it, it's just the, the PCs that I want to deep clean need to be way worse than this. There are PCs out there that are in desperate need of, of cleanings uh, that I would rather spend my time cleaning than this one. Uh, so I'm just glad that we got this working again. We fixed the feet issue. We uh, gave him a bunch of screws and things to cover up and clean up the rear of the case, uh, make sure everything was stable structurally, see it's not rocking anymore. We turned the power supply fan side up uh, to yeah, account for the reduction in breathable air beneath the case. It's pretty much sitting flat on the, the frame now. But um, I think that's, I mean, like I said, it'd be easy to upgrade the case, right? Oh, problem solved, piece of cake. But maybe you don't have the money to upgrade cases and you're missing a foot, or maybe the foot, like one of your feet just broke. Um, how would you fix that? Well, if, if it was my case and I didn't have the budget to go out and buy a new case, or I just didn't feel like it, I would remove the other three feet and just let my case sit flat. Problem solved, right? Flip your power supply fan side up, there you go. So that's what this playlist is about. I wanna clear up any, any confusion about why I'm not upgrading. That's not the point. It, I, I'll try to be a nice guy and upgrade where I can within reason, but it's not gonna be like full on, you know, complete PC overhauls. That's, that's not what this is. This isn't pimp my PC, this is fix my PC. And we did that here. But enough ranting. I appreciate all of you watching this far into the video. I'm also appreciative of the viewer for giving me a system uh, for a few days to try and fix. Look, I don't charge anyone anything. Uh, to take a look at their system and try to fix their system. If I can fix it, great. If I don't, that that's not as great, but at least I'm not charging for it. I'm able to monetize these videos. That's where I make my money. So I'm not, of course, going to charge anyone anything in the local area uh, to clean. So if you live in Orlando, Florida, or somewhere around Orlando, you're willing to drive near uh, where I live to pick up uh, and drop off your system to have it looked at if it's broken or maybe it's super dirty. Um, you can send my wife an email if you are applying to have your system cleaned. Her email's in the description. You can also send me an email. My email's in the description or tweet me at Greg Salazar YT if you have a broken system and want it fixed. With that, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Get subscribed. Why am I holding a thumbs up? I haven't even, I haven't even mentioned the thumbs up thing yet, but you can do that. You can click the thumbs up button. That's appreciated. You can also leave a comment down below letting me know what you want to see next. That's all for this one. My name is Greg. Thanks for fixing a PC with me.